It's a nice quick fun challenge for you this week. So we're looking at answer smashes. So what we have is a prep and participants named smashed together with an answer to a question. Um, so you know, we've got Mo has snow leopard, that sort of thing. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this challenge and thought it was a little bit of fun. So what we have is a question number and the answer smash. One of our inputs is the questions, so we can join those together on the question number to understand what those questions are all about. So that's just a nice, simple, straightforward join question number to question number. And we can see that our join result still just has 20 rows. So we haven't got any additional rows that we don't want coming through there. If we bring in our category, then we can see that, okay, our category and our answer are all in one field. So we want to split that out into the category and the answer. So we do ourselves a nice automatic split, which splits on the colon. And then we just have to get rid of that additional field. And then we can do a nice, easy, again, simple join, just category on category. But this time we see that we've got quite a lot more rows coming through. So clearly this is where an, an example of where we need to do some filtering. So let's go ahead and check that out. So I broke this first filter down into multiple stages. So first of all, um, we've got a calculated field here and it's called correct answer. And we're saying if our answer smash contains the answer, then basically this is going to give a Boolean output. It will give either true or false. And what we can see in the results of that is that there are 20 rows for which that is true. And so these are the ones that we just want to keep. So we keep only those rows and remove a couple of the additional fields. And then we can see that, OK, if we're looking down at our table below here, we've always got the right um, answer along with the right answer smash. So that's great. That was pretty simple. Our final input is the names. Now, all we have here is the names. We don't have any other fields on which to join onto our data set above here. Uh, we can't just join, you know, we can't use a contains in our join. So how do we get around that? Well, what I've chosen to do, um, there'll be many different ways of approaching this, is I'm using in my um, join clause a not equals sign here in the middle. So if you just check that out, that's a not equal to. So you'll see that basically for every single row in my data set that we've got so far, which is 20 rows, we're going to add in those 20 names. So each of our answer smashes is now going to have 20 names associated with it in 20 different rows. So that's creating us 400 rows at the end of that. So we'll just do a similar thing here now. Now that we have all that data in there ballooned out, um, we can just use the filter. And what I did here was rather than doing a calculated field and then filtering based on that, I just took out the middleman. Um, and sorry, let me just show you the filter is just that same sort of calculation that we had before, um, but it will only keep those true Boolean values without those additional steps that we had to take. So a good way to sort of investigate filtering in data sets. So we'll see if our answer smash contains our name and if so, leave it uh, in our present in our data set, otherwise filter out. And finally, we get to the stage where we have 20 rows, which is back to where we want it to be. And we can see for each of our silly answer smash answers um, that we have um, the answer and the name of the prep and participant. So Hopefully that was a little bit of fun. Hopefully you enjoyed that and thanks very much for watching.